Hi there, this is Matt Ben. I want to introduce you to a new project I'm working on which is about exploring electromagnetism by building a simple DC brushless motor. So let's have a look at it. The first thing I want to show you is the different things that we can adjust. So we've got different types of rotors. This one's got two magnets. The ones I've got on here is three magnets. We can also do um, uh, six on here or cut a new rotor to have four. And um, this is the um, Hall effect sensor right here that detects the magnet and as I can move this around I can change the phase of the Hall effect in relationship with the coil. The coil I can adjust how close this gap is between the magnet and the coil and then over here I'm only using the central pot here and that's the thing that adjusts the, the length of time of power delivered to the the coil after the Hall effect is triggered. So let's have a look at it in action. So I can start it up by giving it a little flick and then by moving the phase I can see there's some places where it wants to work and other places where it doesn't. I can adjust the coil here and that if I get too close the magnet is wanting to pull too hard on the core, so the motor stops. Once I get it into a good position for the phase, I can try just this amount of power being delivered. And you can probably hear that the motor is speeding up as I get that about right. This is running on six volts and that's currently drawing about 400 milliamps. So let's take a look at how the circuit works. This part is the power supply and this section over here is representing the Hall effect sensor. When the Hall effect sensor is turned on by the magnet, this point here becomes zero and so does this, so that the P-channel MOSFET turns on the load here, which is the solenoid, so that will attract the magnet. When the Hall effect sensor turns off, this point here returns back to 5 volts but I don't want my gate to go straight back up to 5 volts, which is why I have the diode here separating this point from this point. Instead, the capacitor and the resistor form a timing circuit, and depending on the potentiometer, which is what R4 is, depends on how long the MOSFET will stay on after the Hall effect sensor is turned off. So let's have a quick look at what happens on the scope when we're running the motor. If I start it off, there we go. And then I'm Adjusting the phase, you can see that, and adjusting the amount on the potentiometer. So this top trace is the signal from the Hall effect, so that's quite a nice sharp curve. When it drops down, that's when the magnet's happening. The one below that is the signal on the gate of the MOSFET, so I can affect the timing by changing the, the potentiometer position so it takes longer or shorter to charge up the capacitor. And the bottom one is the voltage on the top of the coil that roughly represents the current, the power going through it as well. We can also simulate what we saw on the scope using this program called LT Spice. So at the moment I've got my potentiometer set to 100 ohms now if I run the simulation, the key thing to look at is the length of time of this lower pulse, the time that the solenoid is switched on for, compared to the Hall effect pulse, this top one. If we come back here and change this to 1K, so I've dialed up the potentiometer, now I can see that my solenoid time length is quite a bit longer than it used to be. You can download all the files from the GitHub. Let me know how you get on.